news defense. Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we will discuss one of the exciting developments in the Philippine defense scene. The proposal from Korea Aerospace Industries to export the KF-21 Boram A to the Philippine Air Force. This is part of the ongoing military modernization efforts in the Philippines and a significant step toward enhancing the country's air defense capabilities. Stay tuned to learn more about what's being offered and what the impact could be for the Philippines moving forward. Recently, Korea Aerospace Industries, KAI, not only offered the Philippines 12 F-A-50 Block 20 Fighting Eagle Jets but also introduced their latest generation fighter, the KF-21 Borame, for the Philippine Air Force's multi-role fighter, MRF, requirements. This proposal aligns with the first phase of the MRF acquisition program, which has a budget of approximately PHP 61.2 billion. Originally, this program was more focused on Saab's offer to sell 12 to 14 JAS 39C D Gripen jets. However, with Kai's proposal, the Philippines now has an alternative option that might be more strategically and financially suitable. So, what exactly are the advantages of the KF-21 Borame? Currently, Kai is offering 10 units of the KF-21 Block 1 to the Philippines. Although this version doesn't yet have full air-to-ground combat capabilities, it is equipped with full air-to-air -air capabilities, making it ideal for air defense and interception missions. This is a quick solution for the Philippines, which urgently needs a fighter jet capable of securing its airspace from external threats. In addition to a proposal to export 12 new F-A-50 Block 20 Fighting Eagle LCAs and upgrade the PAF's current 12 F-A-50PH to a certain standard, Kai also made proposal to export the KF-21 Borame for its MRF requirements. The proposal was said to be based on the PAF's current MRF acquisition phase 1 with a budget of around PHP 61.2 billion, which was originally based on Saab's offer to sell 12 to 14 new JAS 39C D Gripen fighters. Apparently 10 units of the KF-21 Block 1 including ILS can be acquired based on the MRF Phase 1's budget. Block 1 has full air-to-air -air capability, but limited air-to-ground capabilities, making it initially more suitable for air defense and air interdictions. Block 2 upgrades are scheduled to be introduced by 2028, and the PAF can get the Block 2 upgrades almost at the same time as the Republic of Korea Air Force, depending on agreements. Benefits of procuring the Block 1 despite not having full capability is for the PAF to start building its proficiency and familiarity with the type, and also immediately have improved air defense capabilities. The South Korean government is said to be willing to guarantee support for the PAF KF-21s as there are fears that the PAF might be investing in a relatively untested platform and development issues may affect the aircraft. Due to the admittance of the DND that funding is an issue in its quest to procure 40 new multi-role fighters, the DND and PAF could be looking at the possibility of pushing through with the Phase 1 of the MRF acquisition since the Philippine government can actually afford to procure them without the need for special funding arrangements. The DND and PAF can then look at Phase 2 of the MRF program once the legal and financial frameworks are ready to support financing the program. It's also important to note that KF-21 Block 2, which is scheduled to be introduced around 2028, will feature enhanced air-to-ground capabilities. With this proposal, the Philippine Air Force could potentially receive the Block 2 upgrade almost simultaneously with the South Korean Air Force, depending on the agreements between the two countries. Although the KF-21 Block 1 isn't fully equipped for multi-role missions, there are significant advantages for the Philippines if they choose to acquire it now. One of the key benefits is that the Philippine Air Force can begin developing familiarity and operational proficiency with this platform. Training pilots, mechanics, and building the necessary support systems early on will yield long-term benefits. Moreover, the KF-21 Borame can immediately provide far superior air defense capabilities compared to what the Philippines currently has. With increasing threats in the Indo-Pacific region, possessing advanced fighter jets like the KF-21 could give the Philippines a significant strategic advantage. However, there are concerns about acquiring a relatively untested platform like the KF-21, especially given the potential development issues it may face in the future. Fortunately, the South Korean government is committed to offering full operational and development support for the KF-21s that the Philippines may purchase. This is a critical aspect because the Philippines wants to ensure that they are not just buying an advanced fighter jet, but also securing the necessary technical and logistical support to keep these jets operational. In several statements, the Philippine Department of National Defense DND, has acknowledged that funding is a major issue in its quest to procure 40 new multi-role fighter jets. 
However, the good news is that with a budget of PHP 61.2 billion, the Philippines can actually afford to acquire 10 units of the KF-21 Block 1 without requiring any special funding arrangements. This means that Phase 1 of the MRF acquisition program can proceed on schedule without waiting for more complex financial decisions. Once Phase 1 is completed, the Philippines will have the option to move forward with Phase 2 when more robust legal and financial frameworks are in place. This allows the Philippines to gradually build a strong air force without placing an excessive burden on the national budget. With its various benefits and challenges, Kai's offer for the KF-21 Borome stands out as a compelling option for the Philippines to enhance its air defense capabilities. How will the Philippine government decide, and what will happen next? We'll continue to follow these developments closely. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you won't miss other updates about defense and military technology.